Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's AAUT briefing sessions. And I'm Angeline Sim, and with me is uh, Jean. We are from the AAUT Awards team. First of all, we would like to thank all the assessors for making time to be in the assessors panel this year. We really appreciate you to take time for business to do so. Well, I wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we now meet. I pay my respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging. I also pay my respect to all Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders people of Australia and hope that the path towards reconciliation continues to be shared and embraced. The agenda for today's briefing is to highlight some assessment key dates, to introduce Spark Plus support team, and for the Spark Plus support team to demonstrate on how to use the awards portal. Some of the key dates are on coming Monday, 12th of October, you will receive the assessor's information pack from us that consists the assessor's guideline as well as the assessment instructions on how to use the portals. Together with the information pack, we will also include the account ID link and account ID for you to log into the system. Also on the 12th of October, the awards portal for the confidentiality agreement and conflicts of interest declaration is open. And that is open for a week. It closes on the 19th of October. And please note that this is the prerequisite for all the assessors in order to, um, to assess the nominations. From 26th of October to 6th of November, that's where you get to download the submissions of your assigned nom uh, nominees. And this is where you have to individually assess the nominations. And after the individual assessment on the 9th of November, we will introdu introduce you to your team members. That's where we will send you an email that contains your team members' details. And this is where we encourage the team leaders to get in touch with your team members to arrange for the collaborative meeting. Two days prior to collaborative assessment, you can log in to review your team members' comments. And we encourage you to do so as this is part of the preparations for the collaborative assessment. Thereafter, on the 18th to 27th of November, you will meet with your team to discuss um, the collaborative assessment. And thereafter in the December, the awards committees will confirm the rating and in January, the UA board will sign off. Without further ado, let me introduce uh, Spark Plus support team, Mike and Catherine. They are the one for you to go to in regards to any uh, technical queries and they are available during the assessment period. Now I hand over to uh, Mike and Catherine. Where's Catherine? Catherine is logged in. Hello, I'm here. Ah. Oh, hi, Catherine. <laughs> so th this is the chance for all the assessors to meet uh, Mike and Catherine. So they are the one for you to go to for any um, technical support. And they are very prompt in their response. Uh, Catherine and I, we uh, will be able to help with any technical queries that you may have. Uh, during the uh, the various phases of the assessment process. Uh, and yeah, please feel free to contact us during those hours uh, that um, Anthony noted. I'll, you'll see through the demonstration that uh, all that information actually is available uh, in the inside Spark Plus. Um, so the, the contact details, the dates etc. Firstly I'll share my screen so I can just go through the um, the various phases of this assessment process. Now there's uh, so these are aligning are aligning with what um, Angelina has just displayed where um, there's the pre-assessment uh, uh, things that need to be done so the uh, signing a confidentiality agreement uh, checking uh, or declaring a conflict or no conflict of interest with your allocated nominee. So that's the pre-assessment phase. 
And then thirdly, independently assessing your allocated nominees. So that is independently meaning assessing without any other influence from your fellow assessors. Then uh, before the collaborative phase, you get to review the other team members, the assessment team members' assessments. Now that is a, a, an important phase um, where you can reflect on um, what uh, your other fellow assessors have rated and what they have um, entered uh, as feedback. So that then you can in, you can um, decide on how that you know may influence on your own thinking to then come up with a final assessment, which is done in the collaborative phase. Now the collaborative phase is where uh, the team as a whole enters uh, the final assessment for the uh, nominees. Okay, so, uh, but the first thing you need to do is actually log into Spark Plus. So you would have, or you will be rather, sent an email similar to this in uh, a few days time. I think it's happening on Monday, where it will have uh, various links and what, what have you, but included is a link to Spark Plus, Spark Plus being the awards portal. So click the link and it will load the page with your account ID pre-filled. If you uh, lose access to that link somehow, it doesn't matter, you can still enter in the, the account ID, but um, uh, the link just makes that slightly easier because it will pre-fill the, the um, account ID for you. Now, if, if you're uh, accessing Spark Plus for the first time, you will need to reset your password or set your password rather. And so that is done by the forgotten your password button here. Click the button uh, to reset your password, please use the form below, enter your account ID, it's already pre-entered, and then click Submit. It will send instructions to the nominated email address. Now, uh, it, please take note of this note here, where it will, or could be, the email could be in your junk folder. Sometimes it takes a long time to um, uh, for your university email systems to process the emails. Uh, so it sometimes can take over an hour. Um, that is something that's outside of our control, um, unfortunately. Um, but if you, if you have any problems, uh, please feel free to contact Catherine or, or I via the support uh, email address or phone number. So once you've reset your password, you can log in. And so we'll be logging in to do the um, confidentiality agreement. So this is step one. I showed you those five steps earlier. Step one is uh, uh, to agree with the confidentiality agreement, please check it carefully. You may choose to not accept the agreement. I'll just demonstrate what will happen if you do. Actually, sorry, before I do that, there's um, the, this is, I need to introduce actually the layout of Spark Plus. So firstly, the instructions are displayed on the left-hand side. And this left panel for every phase of the process will, will contain instructions that are pertinent to the uh, phase that you're in. So at the moment, it's the confidentiality agreement 
and we've got instructions here saying, firstly, confirm your details by clicking your name above. This button here, if your name was John Smith, it would say, hi, John, I'm just using a testing account. It says, hi, testing. Click the link and this is the uh, edit account uh, window. You can um, confirm that your details are correct. If something needs changing, click the modify button, which enables the fields, change uh, whatever field you need to change. Test, assess, uh, save, save successfully. Okay, and close. Then second step of the confidentiality agreement is read and complete this confidentiality agreement. And then once you've uh, completed this, then you'll be moved on to the conflict of interest declaration. I'll just demonstrate what will happen though when you, if you choose to not accept, you're presented with a message saying that you have selected, I do not accept. And here we are with the message on the screen saying, I do not accept this agreement. Now, another thing to uh, note about Spark Plus is that any, any uh, stage of the process that you um, uh, are in, if you log out, you'll log back in and see that same phase. So I could demonstrate that right now. So at the moment, we're in the, uh, viewing the confidentiality agreement, confidentiality agreement, and I've chosen to not accept, so I'll log out and then log back in. And it takes me straight back to where I was. And so that's uh, useful to know at any phase, un unless it's the um, outside of the period of that phase. So this is just showing for testing purposes, the closing date of uh, uh, tomorrow, when you're, when you're performing the uh, confidentiality agreement and the, uh, and the assessment, the closing dates for those will be displayed according to the actual closing date of those um, phases. Now, I said earlier that the other information um, with regard to technical queries and, and uh, other queries would always be displayed on screen. Here we have the dates and times for the uh, technical queries, the email address and phone number. So if you ever need help with Spark Plus, the awards portal, um, so uh, please feel free to contact Catherine or I using those uh, contact details there and we'll be able to help you straight away. So now back to the confidentiality agreement. I chose not to accept and I now want to change my mind. I can click the back to confidentiality agreement button and choose to accept. This will take me straight through to the next uh, part of this process, which is the conflict of interest declaration. Thank you for completing the confidentiality agreement. Okay, please proceed to the conflict of interest declaration. Okay. On the screen here, we have listed the nominees that have been allocated to me. And this is the award category that I'm assessing. And these are the nominees in, within that award category that I've been nominated. Now I have to uh, determine whether or not I have a conflict of interest. I can choose to say I choose yes for Josie Gray from University of Western Australia. Uh, 
I worked Let's see. So this is a, a, the nature of the conflict of interest that will be shared with the awards team. I worked with JC um, you know, five years ago, for example. Stevie Nicks, uh, I could say yes. I, I sang with her in Fleetwood Mac. That would be uh, not true though. No, no conflict with her. So um, note that the, um, the text here is displaying the um, conflict of interest uh, in detail. Um, please confirm that the, uh, your selections so, um, match up with those descriptions of, of conflict of interest and, or no conflict of interest, and then make your declaration by clicking the button. So when, you, when you click the button here, it will um, notify the uh, awards team of your selections and the text you've entered. And you'll also be sent a confirmation email uh, with that same information. I declare a conflict of interest. Thank you for completing the, uh, the declaration. The awards team will review the conflict of interest and get in touch with you shortly. Now, this may mean that you will be uh, taken, uh, not be able to assess uh, this nominee. That will um, be sorted out by the awards team in due process. So that concludes the confidentiality agreement, that pre-assessment phase. So now we'll move on to the assessment phase. I'll just log out here and we'll look at the assessment phase of the awards portal. Now, like what we were looking at before, we had this uh, layout of this awards portal where we have the um, instructions listed on the left, instructions uh, that are pertinent to the phase that you are in at the moment. So this is demonstrating the assessment phase. And uh, you're being asked to write dot points, three strengths, three, three to five strengths, three to five areas of improvement. This is for discussion. So this is the individual assessment phase where you are individually uh, writing assessments for your allocated nominees. Um, to, and then those uh, assessments will be shared with your fellow uh, assessors uh, in the next phase. Uh, the closing date will be displayed here. Now the rating key will make more sense in a moment after I select a nominee. Technical queries, the dates and times for the technical queries as well as the email and phone number. And then any other queries that are not of a technical nature, please contact the awards team using the email address here. Now, uh, Spark Plus or the awards portal is now is prompting to select a nominee. Here's the nominee uh, selector here. I've been allocated two nominees. And I select the first one. Now the very first thing to do is to access the awards uh, submission for that nominee. And at the top of the screen here, we're told that uh, the nominee's sub citation submission was uploaded then, and I can email that file to me. And so when I click email, 
file was sent successfully. Check your email to uh, get that file. The notice the screen has changed now to let me know that that's that file has was sent on that day. Of course, you can send it again just by clicking the send file again button. So I've sent um, this nominee's submission to myself. Now the next one needs to be sent to me. Click the button to send it. Now those two submissions have been sent to my email address. Uh, I can't really do any assessments without reading those um, those um, submissions. So I guess log out, read the submissions, come back to the awards portal to then um, do the assessments. So we're back after reading the assessments and based on the um, criteria um, noted here, we need to provide a rating. Now that rating key relates to this slider here. Now the slider has the red bar around it or red line around it to let me know that it's waiting to have a rating entered into it. And that the rating is entered simply by clicking and dragging this little orange bar anywhere within that um, slider. Now we've got the descriptions of each of the um, slider divisions from not recommended, further work needed, commended, recommended and highly recommended. Now you may choose to make one, say a low recommended or middle or high, high of you know, higher in the recommended uh, division. And then we can go into the low, middle, and then high of the highly recommended and so forth for each of these slider divisions. And it's a graduated, like a, uh, uh, you know, it slides easily, uh, so you can make very fine grained um, ratings. Enter top points for three to five strengths based on this criteria. Uh, yeah, and then areas from improvement. So of course, you would write something that made sense. Now we can um, enter more ratings and so forth, down to the overall rating. Now the overall rating is an independent slider that works independently of the other sliders from for the other criteria. So I could choose uh, whatever ratings for the other um, criteria. But what I do, do recommend doing is that these ratings entered in for these criteria up here can inform your overall rating. So for example, here I've got recommended through to uh, commanded to further work needed back up to recommended. So if I was to uh, uh, mentally do an average of those, it would be in the commended sort of range. So I could enter that as a starting point, then reflect a little and then possibly think, well, actually I do believe this, it is slightly better than that. I, I think possibly even in, in the, the uh, low recommended range, possibly. But it's, the idea is that these these can inform your um, your decision for the overall rating. Again, we um, need to um, enter in feedback. Please enter three to five overall strengths and uh, areas for improvement within the box. 
the text box here. And then any other comments that you would like to um, uh, enter that you would, uh, for the awards team only, um, enter them in this box down here. And then it's the last, this last point is very important. Click save. Now um, that's saved that um, uh, rating for that other nominee and it's moved on to the next uh, nominee and it's put a, a, a the word rated next to um, the nom nominee that we just rated. Uh, you can then now do the same again the other nominee perform the assessment. So if you forget to click save and click log out before, so I've entered some ratings and uh, some comments. If I click log out, are you sure you've got unsaved assessments, you have unsaved feedback? If you click log out, you're going to lose it. Click cancel, click save. Oh, it, it's prompting me to. Um, to rate that nominee because it's incomplete. And now if I click log out, it logs me out. So there are checks and checks in the system to stop you from uh, potentially losing information. Uh, but it's very important to click that save button anyway, just remember to save. Now I'll just log in, log back in just to demonstrate one other feature of the um, assessment uh, screen. Uh, here we go with time. Oh, it's okay. And the, um, so I've logged back in. It's exactly where I left it. I entered some gobbledygook there and made those ratings there. So it's useful to know that you can leave off and uh, and then come back to uh, the assessments and you will not lose anything provided you do click save. Now another feature that is useful in this assessment phase is the ability to compare the ratings between the two nominees and have those ratings side by side. So I'll just use that the comparative summary to do that. Oh, this one's not complete. That's why it's not listed. I have to complete that writing. Um, Okay, so the ratings for the two nominees are listed here. Now I can see at a glance that I've rated, say for that criteria, this nominee much higher than that nominee. And using this view, you may look at this and think, well, actually, on reflection and thinking about both those um, nominees, that difference is too great. I, I'm not happy with that. So then you can go back and change the ratings to, uh, say, better reflect uh, you know, your thought process. And if you have more nominees, uh, they'll all be listed here and then you can sort. So you may want to sort on the overall rating from the highest to lowest. Um, we have got this ability to switch this from a bars view to just simply a textual view. That may or may not be useful to you. Bars is 
much better visual representation of the uh, ratings you've entered. So that's a, um, a good way of making that comparison between your nominees, your ratings of your nominees. Okay, so that concludes the assessment phase. And so that the assessment phase will end on the date that uh, was displayed earlier uh, with, uh, when Angeline was uh, going through the dates. Then we will be in a review phase, which is the opportunity to see the other, your fellow assessors' assessments. Now that it is just uh, a review phase, not a, uh, you won't be able to enter assessments, it's just simply to uh, read those other assessments and reflect on them to then be prepared for the, the final collaborative phase. So let's have a look at the review phase now. So just Now we're in the review phase. So instructions on the left are reflective of that. You are now reviewing your team's comments in pre preparation for the collaborative assessment. Once again, select a nominee. And here we've got uh, comments entered by the assessment team and then the ratings entered by the assessment team. Now I can't edit anything here. It's just purely to view and reflect because you may um, uh, have entered this rating. Your assessment team member has entered this rating. So that's a reasonably significant difference. The comments may explain those differences. It gives you this gives you the opportunity to reflect on those uh, differences, to then be pre better prepared for the next phase, which is the collaborative phase. And once again, you've got access to the comparative summary. The show your ratings button here highlights your ratings as yellow so it's another way of comparing your assessments to your team's assessments note that the red is the average of the nominees oh sorry the average ratings of the nominees um, So that's the end of the um, review phase there. One um, thing that is worth noting, which I'll demonstrate in the next phase is the submission status. So we'll just move on to the collaborative phase. So the collaborative phase, I need to just quickly Login. So you've reviewed your team assessment team's comments and ratings. Now you are going to use the collaborative phase to then come up with a final assessment for each of your nominees, but as, as a team. So it's a shared environment, the um, collaborative uh, assessment uh, uh, screen. So what that means is that you, now this rated here is just letting you know that the, the individual uh, assessment is complete. It's not the, um, the uh, collaborative assessment being complete.
Now this is a shared, as I said, a shared screen. So what that means is that your other team members are essentially say, seeing the same screen here that you're seeing. So um, with minor differences, this rating is your team member and that's your individual rating. So they're the ratings that you entered previously. And, and then for you know, your team members, it'll be the other way around. Yeah, that one would, would be their own rating, which would be on the top, and then that one would be displayed lower. Um, the instructions are shown on the left. And then right at the bottom of the left panel is your assessment team members. Now, this can be a useful way to, well, firstly, let you know if another team member is logged in. I can see that another assessor is uh, logged in, and um, but the other team members aren't. And I can also use these. These are links to then send emails. So all it does is just will load a, a blank email in your chosen email um, client to then make contact with that particular assessor. If you would like to just contact all the assessment team at once, click the email group button, and then that will send an email to the four other group members, like it says there on, with the rollover. Um, so back to the uh, collaborative assessment screen, I'll just demonstrate it. Uh, some of the things about what makes this a shared environment. So on another screen here, I've actually got this other assessor logged in. So if, uh, for example, the other assessor wants to enter in a rating for this first criterion, which I'll do that right now, it, so I'm, I'm on the other screen here, I'm uh, manipulating the slider and on the screen, uh, this screen, it lets me know that the other assessor is, has control of that, um, that slider and then when they let go, it lets me know what they did. And so, in this shared environment, it will um, mean that each, each team member that's logged in can then manipulate that um, assessment. Likewise with comments, I'll click on this here. It, now this operates differently, uh, slightly differently to the individual phase. The um, the ratings are actually automatically saved once you let go of the slider. It, so that is a major difference between the individual phase and this collaborative phase. So um, that's why you don't see a save button down the bottom of this uh, screen. When you uh, go to enter a comment, the screen blacks out or grays out, opens up this box for you to enter in comments. Um, so uh, strengths, etc. Now I can press cancel and that will just cancel the operation, will not save the enter text. I can choose to click save and I, that will obviously save what I've entered. But I also have this opportunity to automatically save. Now, what that means is that as I type, it will just save all the time. So I'll just switch that on. And so that means it, it's now saved straight away. And as I type, I can um, 
uh, and, and to well, the same thing over again. Um, and that's saved. Now I'll, just so that you can see that from an, the other point of view, as in the point of view of someone else entering in text with the automatic save on. Well, firstly, you can see that it's currently being edited by the other assessor. They've got that automatic save switched on. I'm now deleting some text. And while it doesn't display it absolutely live, but it, it will keep you up to date with exactly what they're doing. And they close from the other screen and then that um, lets you know that the, um, the other assessor has stopped editing. Now, um, another feature here is the ability to see your pre-collaborative comments. So that's the comments you've entered during that individual phase. And click that to see these comments that were made by the uh, team members, the assessment team members in that individual phase. Click the button to hide, now show, hide. Likewise for each of the uh, feedback boxes. Now you may show that and think, I would like to use those comments and then edit them rather than um, have to retype them or copy and paste, you can simply click the append button and they've been added to the um, uh, comment here and then they can be edited. Now that uh, button will append it every single time you click it. So you, if you click it many times, you'll end up with that same comment appended many times, so I recommend clicking it once. Um, and uh, that is a simple way of getting your um, comments from your individual phase into the um, comment box so that you can then edit those to then come up with a final assessment, which is then you know, the, the final assessment for your assessment team for uh, those nominees. Now, um, I said I'll review the submission status. And when you click that, it will display the award type that you're assessing, list the nominees, and list the various things that need to be done for each of those nominees. So the assessors don't have to upload the, um, the uh, submission, so that's not applicable. You've completed the assessment, but haven't completed the collaborative assessment. So that's the uh, submission status. Uh, window. It's a, a simple way to uh, look at the status of your submission. So during the assessment phase, you will see uh, no in in the uh, assess column if you uh, haven't you <coughs> excuse me completed your individual assessments. Now that. Um, uh, completes the um, demonstration of the awards portal as far as the agreements and the assessments. Uh, if we would like to actually uh, uh, 
now take some questions. Thank you so much, Mike. And I do collect uh, two questions from the chat box. And yeah. first question is, um, how, how long do we have before the system times out? Um, yeah. Do we get a warning first? Yes, you get a warning approximately two thirds the way through it. And I think it's two, three hours. So we've got a three hour timeout and approximately two thirds of the way through that. In a, so it's when there's no activity within uh, the portal, um, it will say your session will time out and at a particular time um, and then if you do not do uh, make any actions within the portal um, before that time, it will log you out uh, at that time, which, is, which would be three hour, a complete amount of time of three hours of inactivity. Questions about capture all the comments and rating from the team members. I think that's before collaboration. I think that's from N. Um, and you can actually view the team's comments and ratings in the um, review the team's comments phase before collaborative assessment. Feel free. Um, you know, we will always be there during the uh, each of those phases, Catherine and I, to help you out if um, if needed. I have a question. Oh, yeah. If I can just jump in quickly. Yep, Mike, sure. can I just confirm that we won't have access to, so when we're in the individual assessment stage, we don't have to worry about where we are in the process. We'll only be able to access the part of Spark Plus for the stage that we're in. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. So if it's the assessment phase, you that's all you'll be able to do is assess those nominees. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So just some uh, final reminder. All right, um, do remember to get in touch if your IT department release emails from Spark Plus. Um, confidentiality agreement and conflicts of interest must be completed before any assessment. And during the collaborative assessment Zoom meeting, it is optional for the awards team to join to answer any questions that you may have. If you find that you are, you are comfortable with the process and you don't need us to be there, that is fine. Just to let you know that we are there to support you all as well. All right, thank you everyone for your time. This will conclude the briefing sessions for today. Thank you.